Hey, Hope City family, my name's Roger. Ever since I was a teenager, I've had the same morning ritual. I get out of bed, I brush my teeth, and then I walk into the kitchen for my favorite part, that first cup of coffee. And there's just something about that first sip, you know, that smell as you bring the cup up to your mouth and that taste of its deep, rich flavor. For me, it's as good physically as it is emotionally. And we all have our own daily rituals and some we probably don't even think about much, we just kind of do them. Something or someone at some point influenced us to develop a habit, something internal that became external. I think we would all agree that our inner life influences our external attitudes and that our habits shape us. Participating in 21 days of prayer and fasting is a great way to open our spirit, to listen to the voice of God, to learn from the guidance of the Holy Spirit and to fall deeper in love with Jesus. Now I admit juggling between work and family, taking care of the home, the bills, being active in community and in our church, it can be disoriented at times. And it's all the more reason though to maintain a disciplined time with God. You know, in Paul's closing remarks to the Thessalonians, he says this, he says, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Did you notice those words always, continually, and all? He was telling us that these are every day, all the time things that we need to be doing. Rejoice always means to be full of joy over and over again. Now, joy doesn't come from our circumstances, but rather the realization of all of our blessings. That reminds me of that old hymn we used to sing in church growing up, count your blessings, name them one by one. You know, seeing God every day means that I need to shift my perspective to focus on the blessings and not the circumstances. And to remember the words even of Nehemiah that said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, Paul also told us that we need to pray continually. Martin Luther once said, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Prayer puts breath back into the, our lungs of our relationship with God. It's that opportunity to share our needs, our desires, our emotions, and it also makes room for God to speak to us if we'll stop and listen. Jeremiah said that the Lord, uh, the Lord spoke to him, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. And then finally, Paul tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. Now this is about having that attitude of gratitude. It's that constant state of appreciation and awareness to not take for granted the benefits that he's given us. Again, it's that paradigm shift. So here's what I've come to learn. If I wanna see God in my everyday moments of life, then I need to build the habit of spending time with him by rejoicing always, praying continually, and giving thanks in all my circumstances. So let's pray in agreement together. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we can come to you with all our requests, all our needs. And God, I pray that you would help us to rejoice always, to always be grateful, uh, to pray continually for all of our needs and all of our circumstances, knowing and being conscious, Lord, that you are ever present and that in every situation you're walking there with us. Amen.